Before I get into the nitty gritty of this video, let me just start out by saying I think own voices are important, I think diversity is important among writers and creators and artists and books and movies and music and all that stuff, but this is just something that has been on my mind for a while and I would like to rant about it for a little bit, if you will indulge me. If you're new here, I should say hello. My name is Marlo York and I'm a published author, so I'm going to be speaking about this from the point of view of a writer and an author, but I think the idea of diversity and own voices can fit a variety of artistic endeavors, but obviously my main one is writing, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. So first of all, what is own voices? The most basic explanation that I can come up with is that own voices are essentially when a person from a certain demographic or group writes a story with characters or protagonists that is also from that demographic or group. So for example, this would be a black person writing about black issues and having black characters. Obviously a black writer probably knows more about black issues than any other race would. And very similarly, a woman, a female writer writing about women's stuff with female protagonists, you would assume that the female writer knows what it's like to be a female and therefore could accurately write female issues with female protagonists. And I absolutely, like I said, think that diversity is important. I think it is wonderful to pick up a book and see the description on the back that it's about, I don't know, what it's like to be a Chinese American immigrant written from the perspective of a Chinese American immigrant and written by an author who is a Chinese American immigrant. So you're just getting like this trifecta of something you're interested in or something that sounds interesting written by someone who actually knows what that's like. So they can very accurately write that stuff. And I think that is very important to see diversity in movies and music as well. But like I said, I want to talk mostly about writing, even though I love music and movies and TV shows and all that. But the issue that I've had with the whole own voices thing is that there are some people I have heard, listened to, that seem to take the idea a little bit too far to the point where it almost sounds like you're not allowing someone to write what they want to write. The particular example that I saw was on a different person's channel where they essentially said that own voices are important, of course, but that if you don't fit into that specific group or culture or whatever, you have no business writing it. And I think that is absolutely incorrect and stupid, and I don't think it's anyone else's job to not allow someone to write what they want to write and make assumptions about them based on how they look or what their name is or something like that. So their example was, um, say you have a story that's about a gay person or trans person coming out or transitioning. They were saying that if you're straight, that you have no business writing about a gay person's coming out story or a trans person's uh, transition and what that's like because you couldn't possibly understand. And I don't think that's correct. I mean, sure, you don't have that first person actual life experience yourself, but that doesn't mean that you can't do research. That doesn't mean that you don't have uh, family or friends that have gone through that. That doesn't mean that you maybe have a child who's gone through that. That doesn't mean that you can't go to your friend who may be gay or transgender and ask them, what is this like? What is it about? I want to write a story about this because it feels important to me. Can you help me by giving me your perspective so that I can make my story accurate from what your perspective is like? And the whole idea with own voices, when it's taken to a negative extreme, is that you're assuming that any one person, just because they fit into a certain demographic or group or culture, that's like saying that their specific view of the world in that culture and that group is the only one, or that their way of seeing the world is 100% accurate and is fitting no matter what. And uh, that's also not true because even amongst a group or demographic, we all have different perspectives of the world in certain situations. One person might be faced with a certain situation and think about it from this perspective and this opinion and react to it in this one way. Whereas someone who's faced with the same situation, who also fits in that same demographic, might take it completely differently and react to it completely differently 
and have different opinions on it. That's why I think it is important to have a diverse writing culture and authors and diverse stories, but you can't just assume that one person writing something from one perspective is 100% the facts and that's that. I think it's very easy for the idea of own voices being the be-all, end-all. It goes a little bit too far in the sense that no one else should be allowed to write what they feel and what they think is important. Uh, just because I'm a white, straight woman, who says that I can't have characters or even a protagonist who is a black gay man? And also just because one person fits into this particular mold, who's to say that my culture is what is typical of what I look like, if that makes any sense. So my example for that would be, I have a friend who is white, but grew up in a predominantly Hispanic location, area, and most of his friends are Hispanic, and he, being a white person, was actually the minority in his school. And so if he was going to write something, but someone saw him and said, okay, that's a white, a white man, why is he writing about anything having to do with Hispanic people? But it's like, that's, that's his, that's how he grew up. That's his truth. Just because he looks a certain way or has a certain name doesn't mean that his culture has to be white and straight and blah, 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 because maybe he didn't grow up that way. And then of course, you know, maybe some people will think this is a bit of a stretch, but what about historical fiction? I'm guaranteeing that a lot of the people who are writing historical fiction nowadays that didn't grow up in the 1700s or whatever century, and they don't know exactly what it was like. And you could say, okay, well, that's different because that deals with a timeline and not necessarily a culture, but it's like, culture changes throughout the years. So if you're writing something that's historical, that is from a time that you did not live in, you don't have that first person perspective of what that timeline or what that culture was like at that time. We have historical documents. We have things that people wrote at that time, diary entries or, you know, stuff like that. But uh, people can lie about that stuff. But one thing that was brought to my attention when I was in a college uh, lit class was that history is written from the perspective of the survivors and the winners. So if someone wins a war and they're writing a historical document about that war, they can absolutely stretch the truth and make everything very sparkly and make it sound really great from their perspective. You're hoping that people, if they're trying to write something that would tell an accurate description of the time, you would want them to tell the truth, but that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes they could say, that they had this many soldiers and they did this stuff and that stuff and everything just worked out great for them when in reality it might not be the case. So what I'm trying to say is people can lie about facts and if you're trying to get an accurate depiction of what a time or what a culture is like, it's only from that person's perspective. It's only from the person who wrote that thing's perspective. And you can't assume that everyone's culture and everyone's perspective is always the truth or is the same for everyone of that particular group. I can guarantee you that my culture and my depiction of the world, my perspective, is not the same as every single other white straight woman's depiction or perspective on the world. And I don't want to sound like I'm running around in circles too much because I absolutely do think that own voices are important. We should have multiple perspectives and voices regarding each demographic or group or culture or time or whatever. But don't tell anyone that because they don't look a certain way or identify as a certain way that they're not allowed to write what they want to write. It's no one else's job to say, you're too white looking, so you couldn't possibly write about that culture. Oh, I'm pretty sure you're straight. I haven't found anything saying otherwise, so you're not allowed to write about gay people. And that is something I've heard about on BookTube, is uh, people try really hard to, to read a diverse selection of authors, and I think that's great. I think you should absolutely try to read stuff from different perspectives, but um, I've heard people rank a book or a story a little bit less than they would after they found out that the author didn't fit the assumption that they had of them. So say someone is reading a book that's about Chinese culture with Chinese characters, but they found out the author was black. And then they thought, well, I was gonna rank this a five-star book because the story was fantastic, but then I found out that the author wasn't Chinese. So then I said, well, you couldn't possibly 
have an accurate depiction or idea of what Chinese culture is like, so mm, I have different feelings now. And I think that's really sad that you are judging a book by its authors so critically, or to somehow mar the book and the story and to feel like it's just not as good because you suddenly realize the author wasn't what you were expecting. One author that I always go back to is Lisa C. She's an American writer who, I think the majority of her books take place in China, usually like historical China. And the thing is, I looked her up and she looks very white. So I don't ever think that her books are less than or maybe less accurate or less interesting just because she's white looking. And I did look it up just now and it says that, according to Wikipedia, her paternal great-grandfather was Chinese, making her one-eighth Chinese. And this has had a great impact on her life and work. She has written for and led in many cultural events, emphasizing the importance of Los Angeles and Chinatown, which I think is great. But the problem is that when I first looked at her, I thought she was completely white. So if I was the sort of person who was asshole enough to think that, oh, her books suddenly aren't that great anymore because she doesn't look Chinese enough, that would be ridiculous because I love her books. I think her books are great and it doesn't matter what she looks like because just because someone looks a certain way or has a certain name doesn't mean that they don't actually fit into a certain culture or demographic. I mean, for instance, I'm technically part Native American, but I don't look like it. And well, a lot of people don't believe me when I say that, and I don't feel the need to write about Native American stuff, but I have written Native American characters. And the thing is, just because a character fits a certain demographic doesn't mean they have to be like some stereotype of their demographic or they have to be super Native American acting or super Chinese or super white. And I think it just going to these extremes and assuming that like characters have to be a certain way because their authors are a certain way or that characters are not allowed to be a certain way because their authors are a certain way is just ridiculous. I've also written about characters that are queer, homosexual, whatever, and even though I'm straight, that doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to have characters that are of that way. I have a lot of gay friends, I have trans friends, I have friends all over the spectrum. And sure, I don't have, you know, that exact experience in my own life, but I know what it's like being someone from the outside looking in or going through these situations with my friends, especially in high school when my friends were first coming out. For some of them, it was kind of easy in the sense that they didn't get really, really bad negative reactions from their family, but other friends of mine did get really negative reactions from their family. And so just because I didn't have that experience myself, I don't think that should be a reason that I'm not allowed to write about gay or trans characters. And in the same way, I don't think because I'm a female, I'm never allowed to have a male protagonist. This happens all the time. Like men and women are allowed to write about each other. And there's some people I've seen where a man writes about a female protagonist and there's some people who just feel like they need to bash on the way that he portrayed the, the character just because she's a woman and, oh, he's a man, he couldn't possibly know what it's like to be a woman. It's like, yeah, he doesn't know what it's like to be a woman, but that doesn't mean he doesn't know women. And also, why does it have to be that a man isn't allowed to write about a female because, what, he, she's not, like, stereotypically female enough? Like, she can just be a character who's awesome, who happens to have a vagina, and it's not hurting anyone if she's not female enough from their perspective or, God forbid, the author wanted to write about a woman, but he's a man. Like, there's no reason to call in some police and have him arrested because it's not an accurate depiction. Maybe he was raised by mostly women and really admires them and wants to write about female characters from his perspective. Just because he's a man doesn't mean that he's writing negatively or inaccurately about women. It just means that he doesn't actually know what it's like to be a woman firsthand. <sighs> I'm starting to get heated and I haven't even had my coffee yet. <clears throat> Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> and here's another thing, just to kind of tone down the sass a little bit. What about animal protagonists? <laughs> I can guarantee that no one who has ever written from a dog's perspective knows what it's like to be a dog. No one knows what it's like to be a cat. No one knows what it's like to be a horse. And yet there are books that exist with animal protagonists. And even the people who write about these animals, there's no guarantee that they're an animal expert. 
and know necessarily what an animal would think in this perspective. And I know some of you are probably thinking, well, that's just ridiculous. Who cares? They're animals. It's still inaccurate, isn't it? If you're saying that own voices can only write about their own perspective, let the animals write their own stories. Let the dogs write their own books. <laughs> now I'm just kind of going in a weird direction. But yeah, let's try to bring it back around, bring down the sass a little bit. It's only 7.21 in the morning. <laughs> if you're still watching this, thank you for sitting and enduring this rant with me. This is just something that, as a writer, I've wanted to get off my chest for a while. If I didn't say it once, twice, three times already, I'll say it again. I absolutely think own voices are important. If you are someone from a certain demographic and you feel like your particular story isn't out there in the world, feel free to write it. But if you're not from a specific demographic, but maybe you know someone who is, or maybe it was somehow part of your culture anyway, something that you grew up admiring and wanting to learn more about, absolutely. Do your research on something, interview people that you know, and write that story. I think that diversity in books is, and movies and whatever is so important and so fun. I love seeing and reading about different perspectives and different cultures which is one of the reasons why I love Lisa C's books, because I didn't know much about Chinese history. So reading her books kind of gave me a glimpse into that. So I love seeing diversity. I think it's very important. I think we should all find ways to write our own particular stories. But I don't think it's anyone's job to police what someone should or should not write about just because they don't appear to come from a certain demographic or culture or whatever. You don't necessarily know someone's full story and you don't know how they grew up, you don't know how much research they put into something, you don't know if maybe they are writing just what they observed from their own perspective of someone else's culture and the things that someone else went through. <sighs> At the end of the day, I think people should write what they know, they should write what they like, they should write about their interests, and if they don't feel like they know enough about something but really want to write about it, interview people, travel places if that's something that's required, do research, whatever it takes to fill in any of the blanks that are missing, and uh, let's just enjoy stories and writing and books and movies and maybe just stop trying to nitpick so much and be angry about things because at the end of the day just being angry and feeling defensive about something that doesn't really concern you doesn't really do anyone much good. So yeah, if I made you angry, be sure to leave a comment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. So if you're still here, if this made any sense, if you have an opinion on own voices, and if you've ever felt like you weren't allowed to write a certain book or about certain characters because you didn't think that you fit into that mold that well, uh, leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Let me know some of your favorite authors who maybe fit a different demographic from you and leave book recommendations below or movie recommendations or whatever because I, like I said, I would love to read more stuff that was written from other demographics, other cultures that are not my own. So definitely leave those below in the description. No, leave those below in the comments. <laughs> I'll be leaving stuff below in the description. If you'd like to follow me on other social media, I'll leave those below in the description, not in the comments. If you'd like to check out my self-published novels, A Blood of Fire and Trail of Flames, those will be below in the description as well. So until next time, see ya. Please don't leave hate comments. Thanks. <laughs>